Hi guys, my name is Aish from Classic Quilts. It's been a very long time since we updated our YouTube channel. So I thank all of you for not leaving us behind. In fact, we've actually grown by like 500 people in the last couple of months. So hello, if you're new, welcome to the Classic Quilts Dubai YouTube channel. We are a quilt store and a hobby sewing shop based out of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, which is in the Middle East. <laughs> so um, it's amazing that we're connecting with so many people all over the world and we're able to play with these beautiful machines and these brands and doing all our YouTube sewing tutorials. And it's so much fun that we can share this with everybody, no matter wherever you are in the world. Um, today, we are going to be doing a really fun unboxing video of the Bernina L series overlockers. Um, because we are in a smaller market, uh, we get these machines a lot later than the United States does. So as much as there were videos of this that have been going viral, like maybe a couple, eight, nine months ago, uh, this is now our chance to do our unboxing and to get excited in our little part of the world. So um, we've had some time to actually explore the 850. So there are two models in the 8 series uh, and they're the new Bernina L8 series overlocker machines. And you, it's just a mouthful to say and it's even more like a bigger machine to even see. You can, these are a lot bigger, they're a lot sturdier than our regular overlockers, the ones that we've seen with and played with in the store. And they're just so exciting because everybody has been talking a lot about the air threading system. But there's just so many other things to it in terms of how easy it is to use these machines. And how beautiful the stitching is. How nice the machine sounds. And I really hope that I can show this to all of you today as we unbox uh, the bigger <laughs> machine from the 8 series. So the, this one is the L850. Which is the smaller or like the lower machine in the 8 series range. Then the higher end machine is the 890 I'm gonna be unboxing this machine today and I have not seen it yet I have only seen it online so I'm gonna be even sewing on it and you're gonna see that it doesn't really take me too much to get rolling with that machine I have of course played with this machine this is a really good machine for those of you who like the four thread overlocker you like to play with four threads three threads or two threads if you're after that combo machine if you're after the ultimate overlocker sewing experience then you're going to look at the uh, 890. Um, you will see now as I unbox this and I put these guys together that there's already so much of a difference between the both of them. That one has got a whole touch screen to it so it's really exciting and let's just get to that and we will go through the unboxing. So you can see what it is when you get your machine how it's going to be for you when you unbox your 890. Here so I'm going to of course take this off the table it's too high for me but I thought it was really nice. I mean, if you actually look at the top part of this box, uh, they kind of tell you, it's like a quick manual of whatever you expect to see inside this box, right? Usually these kinds of details are in a manual, which of course, when I open, you love to move the camera. Right, so when I open this, of course, you will see that there is a whole manual that's right here. This is of course gonna have like everything that you need to know about this machine. But I just thought that from a perspective of convenience, it's such a quick checklist for you guys to see before you, as you unbox your machine to make sure everything is there. All right, so let's go through everything that's there at the top part of this box. And then I will finally take out the machine. So you've got a beautiful dust cover. So whenever you're not using your machine, you can keep it protected. This is the printed user manual. Although I don't use printed manuals anymore i'm so comfortable with digital but i know this is not the case for everyone so this is like your bible on this machine all right everything that you need to know about threading everything you need to know about what the different symbols stand for what comes with the machine etc etc there is also a quick reference book which is cute because this is the bulky thing and this is just the quick thing and if i have to tell you what's inside the quick reference book it's just all the different button settings. It just gives you a list of all the thread settings, etc., etc. It's it's like a very quick lookbook. All right. I don't know what this is, but I think it's a Bernina accessories book. That's nice. Bernina is such a big brand today, and I think that we're so privileged to be selling these machines and being part of the brand story. But this is just. 
you know, if you have been, if you've, if you're buying the L eight ninety, I assume you love Bernina. You probably have other Berninas at home, so you can just go through this book to see all the accessories that Bernina has to offer for different stitching outcomes. And if you don't have anything, you can always order it from your closest Bernina dealer. It's nice. I think it's like a free gift. <laughs> uh, talking about free gifts, you get overlocker thread. I think it's amazing because you actually look at other brands. This is like the most obvious thing that you're going to need when you open up a overlocker. You're going to need a, you need four colors of the same thread, right? It's just nice that they put in a really nice one by Metla. So it's right there with the machine. It's a neutral gray. This is for your cover stitch. And I will show you guys that as we get to this machine. So this is a combo machine. Uh, which does the cover stitch, which has those five threads involved in it. You can even do the four thread, three thread, two thread overlock stitch as well. You can basically do every single thing that an overlocker would be required to do without having split machines. Uh, the machine definitely works with the knee lifts. If you've never had a knee lift, even in your sewing machine, trust me, you're missing out. I think this is one of a very good reasons to buy any machine is to always check whether this accessory is included or if not, can you buy it separately and does it work? Because it saves you so much of time and gives you so much stability when you're sewing. There's of course the foot pedal and the power cord. And then this is like uh, the little bin that carries like all the scraps of your fabric that the overlocker tends to give because it cuts. And... This is another insert. So when you're not working with this one, you can work with this one. There are a bunch of inserts. We're gonna go over this as we are um, using the machine today. Okay. So this is the top part, which is protecting and holding your machine. Now, if you live anywhere in UAE, Kuwait, Oman, or Bahrain, we deliver to door. Um, and we always make sure that they are handled very carefully. And the best part is um, they will, they are so well packed that it's, We've had zero complaints from all our customers who are not able to come to the store and collect the machine, that they get the machines in 100% working order. So just wanted to put it out there that it's so well packed. Then I open this up. Oh yeah. Can you look inside? Can you look inside? All right. So you see the overlocker? And you see these little tins. I've been told that the tins are special. You can't buy these. They just come with the overlocker. They, of course, really cute storage bins, uh, storage tins, and we will see what's inside them. This is the extension table for your overlocker, which I think is a really good accessory to have, considering that most projects will have some kind of bulk, and it's good for the overlocker to sort of balance that out with the table. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see what's inside the tins. Can you, can you see the tins? All right. So you have all your cone and your spoon holders. I think in the older overlockers, it just came in a little plastic bag. I think it's really sweet that they've given us some really cute little, you don't have to use those biscuit tins anymore to put your sewing accessories. It's all really nice and it belongs to the brand kind of thing. Okay, let's see if I can open this without overlocker is literally in the way okay i can't this thing is literally in the way so let's take out the machine i think that's the most exciting part as well so i'll pull this guy out and i'll put him next to the 850 and you're going to see why this one is so much more exciting than the 850 although i think both machines are fantastic okay so it was easy. I had to put it down so I can pull it up. So let's do this. Let's get it. It's super snug. It is heavy, okay? It's not a light machine. It's super sturdy. Hopefully I didn't put it next on anything. I'll move this guy as well. So I can now take this out. See, it's like wedged in. I think these are where all the extra feet are. Yeah. These are your cover stitch feet accessories. I will show this to you guys when we are doing the stitching on the machine, all right? So that's your cover stitch foot. I'm gonna put this away. And I guess we're gonna do the fun part. I mean, I think you can't see anything, can you? Yeah, it's completely protected. So we're going to, you got a good view? Yeah, okay. So we're going to remove the tape.
take this out. Every Swiss machine, Bernina machine has this tag. It means that it has been inspected and gone through the test in the factory and it is in perfect working condition. It's like a factory test. They do it for every single machine. That's also why you can see that it has been overlocked over here. They put a fabric to, to make sure that the stitches are coming the way they're supposed to. So anyways, by now we have revealed the machine and how beautiful is that? Uh, you can see when you compare the 890 with the 850 that just this portion, like, like right here, this portion is so different. Everything is completely electronic. You have a touch screen. It's super similar to how we interact with the world today. We are all on smartphones. We are all on smart TV, smart refrigerators. So why can't our sewing machines and our overlockers be smart as well, right? So it's you're going to find out by having this completely programmed into a little touch screen, it makes the whole threading process so much easier and so much more manageable. It's going to save you tons of time and it's definitely going to enhance your sewing experience. This is where all the threading for your chain stitches and this is where all the threading for your main needles are. And I'm going to then later on take you onto the table where we'll be sewing to show you what all goes down over here. A couple of other things that I really have to appreciate about the overlocker is this bit. Like if you look over here, it's like a free arm. So if you are like sewing like t-shirts or any kind of object that requires that nice circular arm, you're able to do that over here without you having to really fuss over seams getting stuck together. So I think that's really nice as well. Another thing that I really appreciate is, of course, look at the stem, but look at how nice the arrangements of the cones are. I, I mean, like when you look at these machines, you know that these are serious machines. And I would actually give that as the word for these machines. They're serious machines for a very serious sewist. It's not fancy. I feel like that's just a rude word. <laughs> it's technologically driven. It represents the savvy sewist today, somebody who wants to just push the button and start sewing, wants to save the time on wondering how to thread a machine, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this machine, we're going to go on the table, and we're going to sew over it, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the L890. I think in terms of features for this machine, the one that stood out for me the most, of course, apart from the air, air locking system, air threading system is this user interface because anybody who we have sold overlockers to people who use overlockers I think the biggest issue everybody has is with threading and you're going to see today as to how easy this is going to make it for me this machine makes it for me to just thread and stitch honestly without even having to really test I feel like I didn't test any of my sample pieces and they all came out pretty great so these were like the, some of the sample overlocking stitches that I did and I didn't even have to test it I just basically ran it on the machine and I was quite happy. But let's look at this, right? You want to find the library of all the stitches. You have to hit that icon on the side. Um, you have two views. You can view it this way or you could even view it, sorry, this way. I just like this other view because I can actually see the name of the stitch. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to start with a four thread overlock stitch. Then I would do uh, a two thread stitch and I'll probably do even a cover stitch. So you can see how easy it is for me to like move across this machine. Um, the other things about this machine that's pretty cool. Uh, one is of course the knee lift. I think um, if you don't have it, you're not gonna know, but once you have it, you can't sew without it. It's when you push your knee against it and the foot, the foot goes up and down without you having to really uh, touch the back and when you're sewing you want to have your hands on your fabric not on the back of the machine so I think that's a really good feature of course I'm going to pull this out I don't think I can open this door when that's on so there are two doors that we open here one is not for the tweezers and properly so that's the first door and then the second door is this one over here, All right? So you can see that this machine comes with everything that 
I think almost all good Bernina overlockers have come with. You have the lint brush. This is to thread the needle. Uh, then this is the screwdriver to uh, change the needle as well. And then of course the tweezers so that we can thread the needle. I think I've inserted this incorrectly. I should have put it. I guess this is gonna work. Anyway, there's always a spare set of needles. And honestly, you're gonna see us using this. These are those foam pads that you can put your needle in when you're sort of interchanging and going between three thread, uh, between like two needles or three needles or whatever it is. So uh, it's very useful to have that so you don't lose your needles as well. Okay, so let me show you now uh, very quickly how I set this machine up for a four thread overlocker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select what I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do the four thread overlock. And of course, right here, you can see everything about the settings. So you can see like everything about the settings. You can see that there's a foot. Then what do I do with the upper looper? Where is my blade? What's my, you know, my, my, uh, this cut, cut width. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then the micro thread control. These are the recommended settings of the machine. Now, of course, if I find this quite alien and I want a more step to step, uh, instruction, I won't click this button, I'm gonna click this button. And you're gonna see how this helps me understand step-by-step -step instructions on how to thread this machine. For me, this is the mind-blowing feature of the L890. And I think if you're a serious overlocking user, overlocker using person, I think you're gonna be sold on this machine just with this interface. So check this out. So, okay. Okay, so let's start with this. So the first step, it's asking me to lift up my pressure foot. So I'm going to do exactly that. The next step. So it tells me to unthread. So I've already threaded this machine and I've used it for another stitch. So it's going to tell me at this point to unthread the following three. So that's my right cover stitch, my left needle and my cover stitch uh, thread. So I don't know if you guys know how to unthread your machine, but we kind of just snip off the threads, the one on the right cover stitch needle and um the other one is here and the other one is left needle which i think is this one yeah so basically i'm i'm unthreading everything <laughs> all right so we pull out from here this is the safe way so you pull it out the same way that you pull it in okay my right my my lower looper remains threaded and that's also fine if you want, just for the fun of this, I'm going to even cut out the lower looper. It doesn't matter. But essentially speaking, I need the lower looper for the four thread overlocking stitch. And the machine says, you know, save some time. You don't have to cut that stitch out. I think that's a really good feature. I've cut it out because I think you guys are going to like the air threading so much. We'll show it to you too, with two different uh, loopers. All right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, it wants me to use foot number C11, which is actually already on the machine. So if you guys can see that, uh, I am on foot number C11. And it's also asking me to adjust the foot pressure. Now the foot pressure is up here. If you can see the toggle here. And it tells me to put it at four. It's already at four, so I don't have to change it for anything. Um, coming back to the screen. Now it wants me to change needle position. So it says, right now I need you to insert needle number. Oh, I didn't take this guy out. I forgot. Right. So it's asking me to to have the left needle and the right needle activated. I really don't remove all my threads, okay, I think that's it. Okay, so here I'm gonna use some of the tools that come with the machine. So first, to unscrew a needle, I'm gonna use this screwdriver. So I have to remove only the left, the, the RC, which is already threaded, which is already here, not threaded, it's just kinda here. So I'm gonna unscrew this. And I'll just take it out. I'll just put that back in. Now this machine does vibrate a lot. I mean, it doesn't vibrate, but it does move pretty fast. So I don't want the the tiny little screwdrivers to get lost. Now I'm gonna use this, which is the um, needle inserter. So I just put my needle in this. I don't know where you guys can see it. So the flat side is at the back, okay? And then I'm just gonna bring it here. I have to, of course, loosen the screw. Okay. 
And now I'm gonna insert this guy. I always do that. Every time I unscrew one, the other one falls down. Doesn't matter. Put this one up, tighten this. Honestly, with this particular um, machine, you need to make sure that the screw is pretty tight and you'll know because when you pull this down, it doesn't move and you're fine. I'll get the other thread. Where's the other little one? So again, put this in. I have to move this guy. There we go. Okay. So now, it's just a small tightening which I have to do. There we go. So now, both my left and my right needles are pretty stable. I can put these tools here. I like that there's a space for the tools so they never get lost. Next step, activate the knife. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this. I usually don't remove the, the extension play table for this. But if you can see over here, there is a little knob. The knife above the line means the knife is activated. The knife below the line means the knife is deactivated. And with this thread, they want us to have this stitch. They want us to have it activated. So if I want to deactivate, I just push it there. I'm going to activate it, I just pull it here. So whenever I work with this, I can actually work with this with the extension table on because, oopsie, don't think I got the grooves in there. There we go. Because it's right down here, so I just have to move it. So once you're quite familiar with the machine, you don't have to keep removing the table for that. My stitch cut with stitch width is right here. So it says to put it at six. I've left it at six. Uh, now it wants me to attach the knife cover insert. Now, I actually do not know what that meant. So this is really nice. And I don't know if you've noticed this icon is there everywhere, the little video camera icon. So anytime you don't know something, just click that and it tells you what it means by that. So here it's saying that you want to take out the flat insert and put in the knife cover insert, which actually already is the one that's on the machine. So I don't have to change this and activate the upper looper okay so the only way to activate the upper looper in my from what i've understood is you just have to push down on the foot pedals i'll show you what to do here so you have the knob on the zero and then you just have to push the foot pedal and the upper looper he's actually already out but let's anyways just go ahead and that's it he's out so now it's all in optimal position so that we can actually thread this machine and without having to really thread this machine. Okay, finally, take out the hook from this. So I actually know what that is and I actually had activated the hook. So that's this guy. I will deactivate the hook because I don't need it for this stitch. Okay, um, the rolled hem at zero, which it is, and the MTC at zero, which I will now bring to zero. Okay, okay now it's a fun part. They want us to thread the machine. Now, what's really amazing is in the previous overlockers that we had with Bernina, and I think this is also common for all other overlockers out there, there is a sequence in which you have to thread your overlocker. We always used to tell our customers, first it's the upper looper, then the lower looper, then it's a right left needle and the right needle. And honestly speaking, a lot of people forget these uh, sequences. The best thing about air threading system is you don't have to worry about sequence. You can do it in any order that you want to. It will work just fine. So we're going to start with the the red because I want to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, now that I'm threading, I'm going to turn this knob. You see that knob? I'm going to move it this way. And that's going to activate the uh, the pipes that's going to push the thread through the um, through the air passage system all right so before anything for all the threads you're going to activate there are two points of tension one here and one here so we're going to activate that right and then you bring it down here now you want to leave a lot extra because it needs to go through this is my lower looper thread okay so all i'm going to do is just put the so i've got a lot of extra thread i'm just going to put this here okay i'm just going to push the foot pedal i want you to put the camera here you guys ready i don't think they can see it if you put it that way all right i'm gonna hold it <laughs> so i've got one hand on camera and the other hand on the thread and i'm just gonna press did you see that so 
I'm just gonna pull the thread out. That was my lower looper being threaded. Did I have to do anything? No, I just have to pull this guy out from here. I mean, the threader is already, the looper is already threaded. It's just the extra thread. And all I have to do is just push it away. I feel like the knife comes in the way, so I'm gonna pull the blade down for a bit so then I can just push it behind the. So there we go. I've threaded one looper without doing anything. All I had to do is bring it there and push my foot pedal. Same thing I'm gonna do for, oh, I see this is coming the way. All right, so same thing I'm gonna do for the upper looper, which is the blue. So we bring it here, here, and I really hope the camera can catch this because it's super fast. So I have extra thread. So this is where the upper looper is. If you look here, that's my upper looper, okay? You'll have to bring the camera down a little bit. It's a very, yeah, this is the angle I want you to get. There we go. So here, I'm going to put the thread right here. So if you can get that. I'm going to put the thread here, I'm going to push the foot pedal, and I'm just going to focus the camera here so you can see where the thread lines up. You guys ready? Okay, so, so do, that. do it now. Did you see that? <laughs> it was really fast, but that's my upper loop I threaded, okay? So again, I just pull it through, a lot of extra thread, and then I push it behind. This is where all the time is saved and where all the efficiency can be achieved. Now I push it back because I'm done threading and I close this. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring that out. Uh, of course, I think I'll just finish threading the upper two needles. So I've done the two loopers. I'm just going to do the two needles. Needles are very simple, very straightforward. So it does, again, sequence doesn't matter. So I'll activate, bring it from up, activate the tension discs. And then follow the yellow. So I'm gonna go through the yellow this way. This is the left needle. So if you look over here, there's one, there are like five slots. So pick the second slot, cause that's the second needle. And then you leave it here. Um, really nice if you've never used the, um, the uh, threader. So what you do is you insert the thread in those lips there. And then you find the eye of the needle. I really hope the camera gets this. And then you just push it through and then you let it go. You can then use this hook. To pull it. So it's pretty much quite hands free, quite fuss free. Again, I push this away. I'm going to quickly do this for the right needle as well. I mean, ideally, when you guys are sewing, you probably might use all the same color threads which is quite normal. I just feel that for the purpose of this video, um, we'll just go for different colored threads on the um, needle. So this is gonna come on the right side because it's for my right needle, okay? So again, I love the little eye for details on the tools. I'm all for making the process more enjoyable because if it's more enjoyable, you do it more often. If it's more irritating, then you do it a lot lesser. So I think you're covered there with this machine always going to be exciting to use now we have to of course just see if everything is fine so i'm going to close this i will activate the blade again i'm going to put my tools away so i don't lose them and most importantly it's now from threading it's come to normal setting yes and i can close this guy now i have the thread bin of course where all the um, scraps will fall into I'm just going to run the hand wheel once or twice just to see if a stitch is forming. It looks okay. Then the foot needs to be down. Yeah. Okay, I can see that it's doing a stitch. So now I'm just very confident. I'm just going to take two pieces of fabric, put it together. Align it with my foot. Whatever excess comes out, that's going to get chopped off. And then I think we're good to go, right? Okay, so this is one. I have the foot, uh, there you are. the knee lift. Just put that 
in okay so check it out i can actually bring my needle position down after every stitch pretty cool feature so now it's down right again twist and move this around so i think this is really useful if you're like trying to do like corners or something right see i'm actually doing this guys if you would believe it or not i have no overlocking experience <laughs> but i did a whole corner okay uh and if you want to know how quick this goes this is full speed all right i mean <laughs> this is rookie work like i have no idea how to do corners but i think that's pretty nice but here's the thing you can cut is that it's a beautiful overlocking stitch right and I didn't even have this, the fear of whether the stitch will come out well or not. For the tiny little problems that you might have in terms of like, you know, threads sitting in place, you just have to adjust the micro thread control. Otherwise, I think this is pretty fine. Now, I'm going to show you how we activate a cover stitch. And I'm going to keep the camera rolling for this because I want you to know, because I think the biggest problem that people have when it comes to, say, combo machines is that... Um, they feel that it takes too much of time for them to switch between the overlock and the combo stitch or your cover stitch, right? So they always tend to have one machine that does the overlock and then one that just does in the cover stitch. But if you look at the amount of like time spent that I take to change the interface, it's like four minutes, <laughs> really not more than that. And that's also because I'm kind of slow because I'm so new to this machine. But if I was like regular, I think I'd be much faster because I wouldn't be looking at the guides as much. So let's do this. Let's do the cover stitch. So of course, I'm going to have, I'm not going to unthread the machine because I think I'll keep what I've already threaded. I'll just make allowance for the cover stitch. So I'm going to come back to the stitch portfolio. Let's do cover. And we can pick, oops. <laughs> ah, let's do that. Oh, what am I doing? This is where you can, you have a stylus that comes with the machine. I'm not using that right now. Okay, let's pick anything. I've actually done none of these stitches before. So, let's do a four thread cover stitch. All right, so I'll need a different foot here, C13. I'll need the blade down. I need my thread at five. I need my foot pressure at four. Something to do with the upper blade, I have no idea. No left needle, no right needle. Uh, okay, so I definitely need guidance here. So let's do this again. And take out this, take this out bring this back in later on i need the foot to show you guys was uh when your uh, needles are up and your upper looper is out of the way you can actually sway the foot and this is actually very easy for you to do if you want to remove the needles anyway um right now i'm going to change the needle but let's see it asked me to lift it up and then it wants me to unthread the following parts so the left needle right needle upper looper lower looper so left so i can actually just cut by the color so i'll cut the yellow then i have to cut the green and i have to cut i have to cut all the four <laughs> okay and then i just pull it from here so let me figure out there we go just pull it out i think one thread is somewhere here still okay when i see it i'll deal with it okay now I come here, it says to attach pressure foot C13. Okay, so I don't really know how to attach the pressure foot, so I'm gonna watch the video. And it's gonna tell me to lift the foot. And then there's like a little button there. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Oh, got it, I just had to feel for it. Let me pull the needles up. And okay, I think the only thing I have to be a bit watchful for is to wiggle this out of this one's way. I believe this is the only part of this which is a bit challenging is to remove the foot. Okay, so it just is a snap-on foot basically. To take out the left and right needle and I have to put it on all the three cover stitch needles. Okay, let's do that. So pull out my screwdriver. So you can see the action is so you see once the upper looper is in position you can actually move this foot to the side it's called a swing action for the foot just kind of clears away so it's easy for me to insert the needles up here so <laughs> let's do what i always do put it inside the uh needle holder 
I have to, of course, look at me, I've totally forgotten. I'll to unscrew a little bit because it's a little tight. Unscrew. Deactivate the knife, okay, done. Bring the thread cut to five. So if you can look down here, we have to, we have to bring this from six to five. We're just working with default setting right now on the stitch width. So that's your stitch width. And now we have to attach the cover stitch insert. See, I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not what I have right now. So let's see what it is. So you take out this guy, which you can just, I'll show you how we do it. And then you have to insert the flat cover stitch bed. So I'll show you how you pull it out. The inserts are very easy. They literally detach very easily. I get the one for the cover stitch. Slide it. So you see, it's now a flat bed. The loopers are out, so we'll fix that in a bit. All right, let's do this next. So now I have to deactivate my upper looper. I don't know how to do that, so let's see the video. Activate the upper looper. So I'm going to turn this to zero. Press my foot pedal. And now my upper looper is out of the way. See, now I can actually close this guy. Sometime back, I couldn't close this guy, yeah? So I notice I haven't attached him fully. Let me just do that as well. Why can't I pull it out? Oh, there we go. Sorry. So we attach this. Ah, now it's proper. So I have now deactivated the upper looper and I'm gonna leave it that way, okay? Thank you machine for telling me. Next is no setting of upper looper converter required because we have deactivated the upper looper. Set rolled home position at zero, that's all fine. And now I have to thread the following part. So the three needles and my purple thread. So let's do the fun part first, which is the purple thread. Same mechanism, guys. Activate the tension disc. Bring it down. Turn it into air threading mode. Pull out a bit of extra. Lower looper will be over here. Huh? Uh, sorry, the cover stitch is going to be over here. So when I push this in, and then I press my foot pedal, you see? He's come there. I'll have extra thread over here. So the guidance that I have been told is all you have to do is just cut up to like here and just leave it. The machine will take care, the rest, take care of the rest in the threading. Now I'm gonna do the three threads. Like I said, it doesn't matter in this machine which one you thread in what sequence. So I'm just gonna quickly thread this. And you guys already know this. It's just an extra st step in threading for the uh, cover stitch. So you see, I bring the thread down to the blue side and then for, for the cover stitch, I'm going to go over this loop. And this is now my RC, right? So I'm going to go under, over, and come down on RC. And that would be the third from the end. And that's the RC that I'm going to thread. Now it tells me to close everything. So I have to bring this back here. Close this. Close. <laughs> Oops. Okay, then close this. Okay. Now, I actually don't even know what a cover stitch is, so it's now my time to discover this. <laughs> so, I guess we stitch it like this. I'm so sorry, it's just a test stitch, guys. Don't judge me, because I actually don't know what a cover stitch does. But okay. You just... I think for somebody who had no idea how to do a cover stitch, so if you look at the front, if you look at the machine, sorry, 
it tells you what to expect, right? That you're gonna have three stitches in the front and on the back, it's gonna look like that. So let's see my result. Okay, I think I can just keep stitching till I have some. See, very acceptable in the world of overlockers. All right, so if you look at it, you have three stitches. And on the flip side, you've got a beautiful cover stitch. How cool is that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, just think about it. Like, I actually have never, ever done the stitch in my life before on any machine. And uh, I just had to follow the screen and I was able to completely achieve it. So things that I really love about this machine, apart from how big it is, how good it feels, how smooth it moves, is how easy to use it is, how easy to thread it is, and how they've been so thoughtful in terms of how they've put all the accessories together, the sponge pads there, the air threading, absolutely a breeze. Um, you get all these little accessories along with it as well, so you can check that out. You get a touch pen for your touch screen. But yeah, um, if you are in Dubai, you're more than welcome to come to our store, Classic Wheels, and test out this machine as well as the 850. The 850, of course, doesn't have the touch screen, but it has the airlock system. So the threading system is the same. It just doesn't do the cover stitch, so you will not have this part, and you don't have the touch screen. So you can check out the two and see which one you really like better for your sewing needs. And trust me, this is the industry game-changing model, and it would be super cool to find out, you know, like who from our client base is going to be the first few to actually own this and ride this machine. So till our next video, peace out. And I really hope you guys have a very enjoyed this tutorial, this unboxing. If you have any questions, just drop it down in the uh, comment box and we're very happy to answer it when we get to look at them. <laughs> All right. So this is Aish and cheers and see you guys soon.